Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 121 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and oh man, I'm so fucking psyched that the comedy special trailer is finally out. The release date is July 24th. Everything is just set and ready to go. It's finally fucking happening. Death Threats Don't Scare Me is coming out July 24th. The best shit I've ever done in my life. It's fucking amazing. And I cannot wait for you cunts to see this thing. In fact, uh, what is it? It's Sunday today. So on Tuesday in Melbourne is the very first advanced cinema screening. Uh, And that's when finally... People can see it, and I can actually get this out of my head. It's been in my head for four years. Well, I'm going to do a special. I'm going to do a special. Now I've got to get the money. Now I've got to be good enough at stand-up to record one. Now I've got to figure out how to fucking release it. Now I've got to stress my girlfriend out because I didn't do my job properly. How do you get it in a cinema? Pay $700 to convert it to a DCP file? All right. I'm not making any money on these fucking shows, but I am so psyched for them. Um, Speaking of, there are 10 tickets left to Melbourne. Uh, If you want to get tickets, it's lewespears.com slash gigs. There's 10 tickets to to Melbourne, uh, which is on Tuesday night, 6.30 in Northcote. Uh, Wednesday night is Sydney. There's like 20 or, or 30 tickets. Fuck all tickets left to Sydney. Uh, and that's in Leichhardt, I think, also at 6.30. And then uh, on Thursday is Brisbane, and there are fuck all tickets to that one as well. They're very small, they're very intimate. I'm going to be there hosting every single one, doing a Q&A after. So basically, a lot of people ask me what actually happens at those events. Basically, it's in an actual movie cinema. We all come in, I'm going to be there. At the start, I'm going to be like, hey, welcome. I'm going to do a few jokes. I'm going to tell you guys what to expect and what's going to happen. And then I'm going to go right to the back of the cinema. And then we're all going to watch the comedy special. And then afterwards, I'm going to come back uh, on stage. And I'm going to do host a Q&A where you guys can ask me questions about the special. How I wrote the jokes. How we filmed it. All that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's going to be in a cinema. I'm going to be at every single one. And then after the Q&A is done, I will meet every single person who comes. Take photos. Shake hands. And there's a whole bunch of Death Threats So Scare Me merch like t-shirts and and posters and all that kind of shit that you can get as well. Um, Speaking of, man, dude, I'm sorry to just fucking talk about shit that I'm selling straight at the top of the podcast, but that's all I have been doing is just organizing this shit, and it's finally all happening right at once. I'm wearing the uh, the hoodie at the moment, and dude, I'm so... This is the first time I've ever ever done hoodies, and I'm fucking wrapped with the quality. If you guys are watching the YouTube version... Uh, you can see that I'm that I'm wearing it. It's black. It's real comfy. I'm wearing an extra large. I'm six foot eight. It fits me, fits me perfect. So if you're like as tall as me, or you're like six foot one and a bit of a bit of a fat cunt, it'll fit you perfect. Or if you just like baggy shit, it'll be good. But yeah, they're just like regular sizes, man. They really fit well, and they're real warm. I was fucking cold today, and I went out wearing it, and it wasn't that bad. So that's what I don't know. Sorry, I don't want to fucking start this podcast with a whole bunch of shit about the special, but that's, but I'm just so fucking excited about it. And thank you very much to everyone who has like commented on the trailer or sent me a message about it or, or especially the people who have shared it or sent it to their friends. That shit makes my day, man. The the comedy special trailer, it's like, it's like, it's fucking real. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's finally here and it's real and it's coming out and people have seen it. And I was so so stressed. I was like, ah, oh, I hope they like it because comedy special trailers or tr- movie trailers in general, I imagine, would be so hard to edit. And this comedy special was such a bitch because I was like, I didn't obviously didn't want to put the best jokes in there because that just ruins the special. But it had to be a little bit funny because I've seen trailers. You've seen those fucking comedy special trailers where they don't put any jokes in because they're like, oh, we don't want to ruin it. But then it just looks so unfunny. It's like a guy going, oh, <laughs> hello. And then the audience goes, woohoo. And it just looks shit out. So I think we struck the balance where I put like one half of a joke in that was funny. I'm like, oh, that's funny. You don't need to hear the start or the end of that joke. You can just hear this part and it's funny. And then when you watch it again in the special you'll get to see the the first half and the second half, and then you'll be like, oh, that's even better. 
So it doesn't ruin that. And then the rest of it was just like a whole bunch of setups. So like the setup to the dream world, which is funny. The dream world joke is fucking best joke I've ever written, but it didn't ruin it at all. It was just like, did you guys hear about the accident? So, so I, we put that one in and I'm like, oh, that paints a picture and that makes people want to fucking watch it, but it doesn't make it look shit. Um, and it doesn't ruin the punchline either because the punchline's are fucking, you know, the fucking brutal, man. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, all of the physical stuff that I do in the special as well because I really like physical comedy, but no one does it. No one has ever, no one's, I've never really seen people combine physical comedy with fucked up jokes. And that's some of my favorite stuff. Like, Jim Jeffries does it a little bit. Like, especially in that gun control bit where he's like crawling along the floor, imitating a dude with no legs and doing the safe. And like, I love that shit because it's, because physical comedy is so silly. But when you combine that with like, with really, really dark subject matter, it's for some reason, it's just even funnier. Because it's like, oh man, this is some play school shit combined with horrible stuff. And for some reason, that's funny. So I do, I do quite a bit of that in Death Red Stone Scam. You guys, you guys will see. If you've seen, I don't know, you'll see. Loosebeers.com slash watch if you want to see. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry to start this podcast with just fucking, oh my god, my special. But that's literally all I've been thinking on a loop is, oh my god, my special. Like, <laughs> it was funny when we were, because I put the trailer out at like, um, I put the trailer out at fucking, dude, I just stretched down on the couch. And I feel like, I feel like it's like a, a, a therapy session. <laughs> I feel, so, and, and tell me about your relationship with your father. Yeah, man, it's a uh, pretty fucking good, eh? I'm just lying out on this couch. I'm at my girl's house. It's really fucking messy because we're rearranging all of the furniture. So shit's just everywhere. So I don't want to see no comments of clean your room. It's like, cunt, it's this messy because we're cleaning it. Fuck you. So yeah, anyway, what was I saying? I don't know, I'm just, I just feel so fucking, I feel so, I feel so free. I've never lied, I've never laid down during a podcast, man. It's, it's like, dude, it's like the minute I lay down, I was like, you know what? I don't, why am I even doing a podcast? Why don't I just have a snooze? Why, why don't I just, why don't I just do all of my fucking plugs at the comedy special and then end this thing five minutes in? Yeah, sorry guys, buy my shit. See you later. <laughs> I could do that, but I'm not a fucking dog. Although I am very... I have to sit up. I can't do this anymore. Sorry, guys. Just went into a weird moment there where I just I just, I just, just thought about quitting comedy because this couch was so comfortable. Um, what was I... Oh, yeah. While we were planning the radio show, because um, for two weeks, the Luca Lewis show was on from 10 p.m. to midnight, which means we would get there at 7 p.m. and start planning. But 7.30 was when the trailer dropped. And, it, and everyone was like, all right, so Lewis, what did, you, what did you want to talk about today? And I'm just like, I just need to schedule this and then I post that. And then, and then I scheduled it and then I started getting real, real fucking nervous. I was, I don't know. I just got really nervous. I was like, oh, I hope people like it. And then everyone's trying to be like, hey, so uh, for this talk break, we were thinking that we could call these celebrities. What do you think, Lewis? And I'm like, oh, I hope they like it. So, um... I'm 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 fucking wrapped that people are people are liking it and it's it's really really cool. So uh, I really appreciate everyone's messages and especially the people who are sharing it because I feel like that's I don't know I feel like it's it's just such a good I feel like it's such a good special that if you if you're a fan of comedy if you have no idea who I am if you just watch that thing you go oh fuck that guy's funny as and that was the goal that I wanted to do is not just because I hate that so many people are just like, ah, I'm going to put on a live show and you'll only enjoy it if you know who I am and I'll do fucking games and crowd work stuff and I'll get someone up on stage and dress them up in a costume and then I'll, I'll fucking hit up the projector and play a video and then walk off stage. I hate that shit. I think it's real lazy and kind of disrespectful. It's just a money grab. So I... I don't know. I'm going to stop talking about the special. You know, you know, dude, you know what I want, really want to talk about? What I've been doing all week. I have been, I've been smashing the gym. Smashing the fucking gym. I'm sick of being, I'm sick, I'm sick of being skinny as fuck, man. I'm filling out a t-shirt. I, t I tell you that if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to put on a t-shirt and it's not going to look like a tent. That's my goal. I've been going to gym for the last month, five days a week. Every 
fucking day. I've missed like two sessions, and that's because I was doing comedy special stuff. And, I, man, I got into such a routine. When we were doing comedy every, I mean radio every night, I would, I would wake up. So comedy, uh, the, sorry, radio would finish at midnight. I would get home at one in the morning. And then I would read for half an hour and then fall asleep. And then I would get up at 7.30 in the morning every fucking day. And then I'd have breakfast and I'd be at the gym by 8 a.m. Smashing out leg day, back day, whatever the fuck it was. I'd smash it out. And then I would come home, have a shower. Pack everything up, head straight to the fucking warehouse. And start working, writing, filming, whatever. I've got a bi-monthly bull coming out this week. Smashed it out, man. So fucking cool. And then, after that, so I get to the warehouse at like 10 or 11, sometimes earlier, depending on how long Jim took. And then I'd stay from 10 until like 6. And then I would leave the warehouse at 6. I'd get to the radio station at 7, 7.30. And then we would plan. And then I would work. And then I'd get home at 1am. And then I would go to sleep and do the whole thing again. And I feel fucking amazing. Everyone's like, Ugh, you're going to kill yourself, man. Luke Kidgel keeps telling me that I'm going to die early because I don't sleep very much. Well, you know what, Luke? I might I might die early, but at least I'll get some shit done. <laughs> so you can have your eight hours of sleep or whatever, but, you, but, but you know, when you get to the end of your lifetime and you're dying at 92 and I'm dying at 91, you're going to be like, ah, oh, I wish I had two extra hours to, like, do some more shit, I don't know, every day. He's right, though. I don't know, man. I just... I feel like... I feel so much better. I feel like I function better on six hours of sleep. Because I used to do six hours of sleep since I was, like, 18. Because, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger... I read some Arnold Schwarzenegger quote, and he was like, Ah, you should sleep six hours every day. And if, if you think you need eight, you can get eight if you just sleep faster. And I was like, Oh, I can sleep faster? Sure. So I just started waking up at six, and I got in this real... Man, there's, there's something about waking up early. That's what it is. Like, if I wake up past, at like 9, or or even worse, 10 or 11, even though I'm working until like 1am, I just feel I just feel like I've wasted the, 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 the time. I wake up and everyone's already started doing shit. I like getting up before most people have started doing shit, because it just gives me, I don't know, maybe it's arrogance, but it just gives me this, oh yeah, fuck yeah, I'm working when other people aren't. That's going to put me ahead. I don't know. And everyone used to yell at me, like, for getting six hours sleep. But then I would get... I was, then I would listen to it. I'm like, oh, maybe I do need eight. And then I, I had, like, maybe four months this year where I started sleeping eight hours. And I felt like shit. I felt real lethargic. And, like, I felt like I had... Sleep. You know when you sleep... You know when you sleep in, like, the middle of the day from, like, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then you wake up from this weird nap sleep thing, and then you walk around like it's the apocalypse. Dude, waking up at fucking 9pm is like the first scene in The Walking Dead, where that where that dude in the cowboy hat wakes up out of a coma, and he's just walking around the, the earth, and nothing's happening, and no one's around. You ever wake up at 9pm? It's like coming out of a coma, and everyone's just left earth. Like nothing's happening. You feel like a piece of shit. You feel like you've been you've been unconscious for years, and and the whole world just moved by you. And then you can't get back to sleep, so you just stay up until like three a.m. And then you then you fall asleep at four or five, and then you wake up, and it's just ruined your whole fucking week trying to fix that sleeping pattern. Pattern that happens all the time, man. My girl's like, oh, let's take a nap, and then we wake up six hours later at the middle of night. At, at, we wake up at bedtime, and I'm like, what are we going to do? <laughs> it's fucked, man. Um, what am I saying? Yeah, so I've just been... Yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's my whole fucking schedule. I've been smashing out gym five days a week, and I've put on heaps of weight so far, and like I'm deadlifting. I want to get up to 100, because I used to deadlift 100, and I just just last, last back day, which is a couple days ago, I deadlift 90. Or 95, I can't really remember. I think it was 90, and I was like, fuck! I missed that shit. And it's not that much. I know a whole bunch of you dudes are listening to me like, oh, 90 kilos, that's fuck all. Shut up, mate. If you put it in pounds, it sounds more impressive. 180. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, that's what I've been doing, and I've, and just also just using my phone less has been amazing. Like I've gotten so much shit done. I really recommend you guys try that. Just try using it less. Because you know what? I, I would be like, oh, I've got to answer this email. I've got to answer this message. If you know what it is, you don't. You, you can just, you can be, you can become that guy who doesn't respond all the time. And then no one gets offended. But if you're, if you're always fucking glued on your phone, always using it and always responding, the moment you take like three seconds longer to respond than normal, people start getting offended. But I tell you, man, in a week, if you just stop responding to all messages within the hour, all of a sudden, you become the guy who takes ages to respond and no one gets offended. It's like, it's like magic, man. And once you're the guy that doesn't respond on time, you can actually forget shit and no one gets mad. You're just that guy who forgets shit. Like, you know, you know who, uh, I've got, I've got friends that are like, that are like real successful musicians and comedians or whatever. I got friends that I'll message them and sometimes they don't respond for days and I don't get mad because they do that to me all the time. And it's not because they don't like me. It's just because they got better shit to do. They're living their fucking life. And I, and I, you know what? I'm, I'm becoming that guy. Someone messages me. I, 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 I used to be nah man. Now I'm just no response man. <laughs> I just don't respond until I feel like I want to. And now every day I get to like the end of the day and I sit down and I'm like, you know what? Now I'm going to respond to all of these messages and emails. And instead of being on the fucking phone constantly available and constantly t contactable for 24 hours a day which just makes you end up you respond to like one message and then you scroll and then you get a notification you look at it, then you scroll and you waste fucking hours of your day now i wait to the end of the day i respond to like five or six sometimes 10 emails and messages and then i put it down and i'm like all oh, right now i'm fucking done for the day i don't have to look at it anymore I don't know, I just feel it's so much better just not being fucking glued to this device all the time. Unless you're watching my videos, then fucking glue away, man. <laughs> I don't know. I've just, it's just like ever since I started reading, I'm like, oh, I, I feel like I want more from, I don't know, entertainment or I, I guess like mobile phone shit is just so shallow. Like, I, I still lo I love watching YouTube videos, man. From, like, YouTubers that make a video for YouTube. Not just people who post shit on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Like, I love watching YouTubers where people obviously put effort into it. Like, like I'm gonna make a 10-minute video on fucking this. Because I like, I like making that kind of shit. And I like watching it. You can appreciate it. You see the effort put in. Whereas Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, it's just this no effort fucking, Oh, I gotta post today. I must post today. I mean, even I do that shit. Dude, just, just today, Sunday, I put up a photo of me and my dog. And it is not, a, it's not an interesting photo, but I put it up because I was like, you know what, I have to put up something because I haven't done that yet today. And it's just a photo of me and my dog. And that's what I put up. I was like, you know what, fuck everyone who follows me. <laughs> I'm putting that up. Whereas I would never do that with YouTube. I would never... I think maybe like two or three times I've put up a video because I have to put up a video. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, put this... And every time I've regretted it. But this photo of me and my dog, it's a shit house photo. But I don't care because I just put it up because I wanted to put it up. I needed to. Not because I wanted to. I was like, oh, I've got to post today. So Instagram doesn't make me, make me fucking irrelevant. <laughs> and you know what? It got 600 likes. Fucking well deserved. That's what it, that's what it deserves. Average posts, average response. But man, uh, what, have I, what have I been reading? I, I read The Shining uh, by Stephen King. Fuck, that was a good book, man. Stephen King is such a good author. I've, so far I've read by him, I've read Carrie, It, The Shining, 
and then a couple short stories and he's just fucking good. And he's real creepy too. Like I, I've, I've worked out that I can't handle horror movies. They scare me and then I can't sleep and I can't walk down a hallway when it's dark because I'm like, Ooh-hoo! you know when you're walking down your own hallway at like one in the morning, like you go to the bathroom and then you turn the light off to go back and then you get halfway down the hallway and your door's there but then behind you is just too much darkness. And then this thought comes into your head like, there's probably a monster there, man. And then another thought instantly comes back and goes, no, there's no... Oh my god, there probably is! Run! And you <laughs> and you go, woohoo! And you just start walking at that little bit faster. Like, you're not running. You're not going to run because you're not scared of monsters. But you will pick up the pace a little bit. You've got too much dignity to fucking run. But you, you know... Like, if you ask yourself, and if you're truly honest with yourself, you picked up the pace. Because even though you're a fucking adult, you still had the thought, yeah, what if my hallway just started becoming haunted now? Like, straight, like, right, as soon as I turned off the bathroom light, what if it just became haunted then? And it will be haunted until I get into my bed. And then you just go, woohoo! But that's what happens every time I watch a fucking scary movie. And I, I, every time, I think, oh, I can handle it. I'm a little bit... I, re- I remember when I was like 15, 16, I was like, oh, I'm just too young. I'm just too young. And then I got to 18 and I was like, nah, they still freak me out. You know what? Maybe, I'm, maybe I just need a bit more life experience. And then I got to 20 and I was like, ah, oh, maybe they freak me out because I don't watch them often enough. Maybe I should watch a few more. And then from 20 to 21, I had fucking nightmares for a whole year. Now I'm 24 and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm a pussy, but I'm also a fucking idiot. So I'm still going to watch him. And I don't know why. I'm still going to watch him. Oh man, you know, it was great. What a really good thing on Netflix. What was it? It was, uh, it was like a, it was like an hour long mini movie adaptation of a Stephen King short story. It was like, I gotta Google it, man. You guys have to watch this. This was not scary. It was like just real, um, real disconcerting or off-putting. I don't know the, I don't know the fucking word. Macabre. That's the fucking word. Stephen King, Netflix. What was it? Ah, oh, 1922. Dude, you gotta watch this shit on nine on on Netflix. Don't Jazz. watch. Don't watch Jazz. that. Do you remember don't. that movie, 1922? That was the worst movie. It was so good. Why? Come. No, come on the podcast. I just got a shout. I'm not going on the screen. Okay, fine. You're not going on the screen. But dude, 1922, I'm telling you, it was like a little bit, it was macabre. It wasn't scary. It was just a little bit disconcerting. Freud would have had a lot to say about that movie. It was fucking good. The dude, what did he do? He killed his whole family and then he started hallucinating that they were still there or some shit. I can't really remember. He convinced his son to kill his wife. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, it's way more fucked up than what I thought. Oh, I'm late. I'm going. See ya. No. no. What did you... Why did... Why didn't you like the movie? I hate horror movies and you keep on making me watch horror movies. <laughs> I know. I keep... I was just talking about how I keep making myself watch horror movies. You don't... Lewis, you don't even like horror movies. I have held you in the middle of the night. <laughs> you, you were terrified. You couldn't sleep because we'd watch a movie about demons. Yeah. Okay. I can't do demons. That's what I've worked out. I can do murder, which doesn't make sense because murder's real, man. I'm going. Okay. okay. See ya. <laughs> See, I told you, I can't do scary movies, but I keep doing it and it's ruining my relationship. <laughs> but you got to watch 1922, man. Oh, I need my puffer. Where is it? Oh, right, by the way, fuck everyone. Who screenshot my ass in two, what was it, two podcasts ago? I dropped my puffer under the couch and I bent down to look at, fuck every person that immediately screenshot my ass and started posting about me being thick, alright? One, the reason I'm thick at the moment is because I've been going to gym. Two, fuck off with your, with your pervert comments, man. I thought I would be safe. Now I don't want to look for my fucking inhaler. All these cunts are going to post screenshots of me being thick. Where is it? Man, it's not a good podcast if I don't need my fucking inhaler. There it is. It's always in a pocket somewhere.
Speaking of shit I'm pissed off about, I'm so mad that it took me this long to realize that my website says lose pairs. And you know what? You know what's even worse than that? If you capitalize the L so it says lose, and then you capitalize the P so it says pairs, and then you put dot com in there, so it literally only the anyone looking at it would only ever see lose pairs. The fucking URL still works. It's <laughs> it shits me so much. Oh, you dogs. Under my fucking comedy special. The most important thing I've ever done in my life for you that I have slaved over for four years of my life. I put it up on YouTube, the trailer. I'm nervous. I'm, I can't focus on my radio show because I'm thinking about the reception to this. I put it on YouTube. The first two comments, first one is fucking losepairs.com. Not even with the slash watch. If you guys could post losepairs.com slash watch, I wouldn't be mad about that. At least people would be going to the same place I wanted them to. You're just sending them to my fucking front page of my website. Can't even see my special there. And then the second comment was first. And I was like, oh yeah, why did I spend four years of my life making this fucking thing? Because at the end of the day... All you cunts care about is, lol, his URL looks like pears, and then some other fucking idiot getting the first comment. Great, that's who I'm making shit for. <laughs> oh, man. But thank you to, to everyone who, who's pre-ordered it. That gave me a fucking buzz. Losepears.com. That's, I'll, I'll, never, I'll never stop being angry about that. Um, alright, well, with that being said, I think, what else do I want to talk about? Let me see if I, have, I had notes here. What else do I want to talk about? Gym, radio, hoodies. Oh, so hoodies are here, now the DVD. Uh, I got the, I got the, the, the fucking, um, the test disc from the DVD printers. So they built a menu that has all the commentary with the Shrek jokes on it that ruined Jasmine's life, uh, and... Uh, they sent me the test disc, so I gotta watch that, and then I send it back to them, and then they print off, like, fucking a thousand of them. I'm so keen, man. Can't wait to see it on a, on a disc, and, and, dude, wait till you see the cover art of the DVD, and then the, the actual disc itself. Um, I'm working with this new graphic designer called Zach Bowen, and he basically took Mateo's, uh, illustration, and then just, I don't know, just made it beautiful on all these different formats, man. So, um... From from now on, I'm, I'm with my all my graphic design stuff. I'm working with Matteo to do all of the art and the illustrations, and then Zach does the text and like the formats because he's real good at that shit. Um, so yeah, that's how we did the posters. So Matteo did all the drawings with the weapons and the roses, and and that was like based off me a, a concept that I that I came up with first, and then he made better. Uh, and then Zach came in and put all the text on it, and that's why the logo looks so good, like the Lewis Spears presents and all that kind of shit. Um, and yeah, man, it's real, I'm, I'm real, I, I don't know, I just, it's, I feel, I feel so fucking lucky to be working with so many different, different talented people, from the guy who shot the thing, to the, to Jazz, who's organizing it, and making sure that the tour goes well, to, to the editors, and, I don't know, everyone in my team is just so fucking talented, that it's, that it's made, I, th I think, I honestly think that with this comedy special, it's the first thing I've ever done, where I feel like every, every part of it's, is perfect. I've never felt that before, and I'm and, I, and it feels weird, man. I'm like, oh, I'm putting out something that I'm like completely happy with. It's so strange. Um, but I guess that's great. So I'm just trying. I'm just trying to. I don't know. Enjoy this moment of like, oh, I've done the the fucking perfect thing. I've been chasing for so long. I'm trying to enjoy it because I I've, I have an inkling that it's not going to come again. I don't know. Maybe ever. Because it's, you know, everything you put out, you're like, oh, that could be better here. I wish it didn't say that. Oh, that's fucking... You know, I don't, everything of it is, is fucking perfect. And I can't wait for cunts to see it. July 24th. All right. With that said, miscellaneous bit at the end. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. It's the part where I answer questions sent in by listeners if they, leave, if they need life advice, if they have any cool stories that they think that I would enjoy anything from vandalism to revenge to to especially revenge where you regret it. Those are my favorite stories where you went way too far. Cause I got I got dude I got heaps of that shit where I'm like ah 
fuck your life. And then I, then and then now I'm like, ah, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> um, all right. So if you would like to send me a question or or a story you think that I would enjoy, send it to podcast at losepairs dot com. Oh, fucking, I hate this shit so much. Losepairs dot com. I'm gonna change my URL. Podcast at losepairs dot com. Uh, and I would love to. I'd love to. You're you're all fucking assholes. Losepairs dot com. I, man, I went on the podcast group, the Speared Sundays podcast group on Facebook, and I knew straight after the podcast dropped, I'd be like, you know what? So many people are just going to be like, oh, hang on, I'm trying to get it up now. Spearhead Sundays podcast group. Um, all right, I got it up. I'm looking at the posts. There's like 50 different posts of people photoshopping me into a pear farm. It's like, thanks guys. Me and a fucking pear. I hate this shit. Just a picture of a pear. That's the worst one. Some some can't just posted pictures of pears. Like, have some creativity, would you? If you're gonna at least at least open Photoshop. Dogs. Anyway, I'm getting distracted by how angry I am about about my URL that I had four years to realise. That it said fucking lose pairs. <laughs> All right, first question. Uh, only question, actually. I'm running low on some emails. Send them to podcast at losepears.com. Uh, the subject line of this is uh, My ex, who I'm talking to, has revealed that she's asexual. Help. G'day, cunt. My name is Aaron. A little while ago, I sent you an email about my bland situation needing help with my ex and not knowing what to do. And you almost read it out on the show, but you skipped it since I guess it was too boring for Speared Sundays. Uh, normally, I skip emails if they're too long, man. Like, some people will send me... Like, I, look, like let me be honest with you with this, this segment of the podcast. I love reading your stories, but ultimately, I don't care. And, and neither does anyone listening. No one actually... Everyone wants to hear the story, but no one actually cares about your shit more than you. Or, or, or even as much as you. No one gives a fuck. So, if you, so all I want is a succinct problem, alright? Don't use my fucking podcast at loosebeers.com email as your therapy session to write seven paragraphs. Because I'm sorry, no matter how much it's shitting you, it, I don't care. I care. I have enough care for three paragraphs. If you can't shorten your story, unless it's the best story ever told. Like the like the bus driver having a vomit fetish and then and then stopping the bus to make you spew on the bus so he could fuck you. Then ten paragraphs. I'll read all of that shit. But if you just have a normal thing, three paragraphs is plenty, man. Condense that shit. So if you've ever sent me an email and I just never read it out, it's probably because it was too fucking long. Anyway, this can't shorten his stuff and send it back. Um, uh, I guess you skipped it because it was too long for Speared Sundays. Well, not anymore, cunt. My situation has gotten a bit of an upgrade, so to speak. I guess it's now interesting enough for the show, hopefully. There we go. This guy's at least realised. He's like, oh, my situation got even more fucked up. I'll send Louie another email and see if it's funny enough to read. And you know what? It fucking is. So basically, I've been in contact with my ex for almost a year, and we've been talking a lot, and even met up with her recently. <clears throat> That's bad. I still like her, and I think she still likes me. But a few weeks ago, I spoke to her, and she revealed to me that she thinks that she is asexual, meaning she doesn't want to fuck anyone at all. She mentioned how it could possi- She mentioned how it could possibly be how. What the fuck? She mentioned that that's the reason why. She mentioned how it could possibly be how she's socially awkward and a little antisocial. What are you saying? Hey, she's asexual and you're fucking dyslexic. I think what you're trying to say is her realizing she's asexual is the reason why she's socially awkward and antisocial. I think. Whatever, moving on. It's been on her, wi- her mind for a while, and she really thinks that she's asexual. Now, if she's the type of asexual where she doesn't want romance to any degree, I'll gladly let her be. But if she's as- just asexual so she doesn't want to have sex, uh, 
But if she's asexual, I think she's just the kind who is not interested in sex. And to be 100% honest, I think I would be okay with that. Really? Would you? Would you really, man? Would you really? Honestly? You would... You would be fine. Why would you sign up to a relationship where someone will just never have sex with you? Or if they would have sex with you, it would be an obligation and they wouldn't enjoy it. Why would you ever do that to yourself? Because let me tell you, man, why rush it? Why rush it? Because you can go through that period when you've been, as soon as you get married. There's your asexual partner. But at least do some fucking before then. Don't rush to get yourself into an unhappy marriage relationship where no one fucks each other. I think I'd be okay with that. When I first started to notice her and have a major crush on her, I remember one of the first things I thought was, I don't even care if she's asexual. <laughs> no, you didn't. Is that the, that's the first thing. That's not the first thing that anyone has ever thought, bro. No one has ever had the first thought when they see someone of, man, look at that girl. I don't care if she's asexual. Why? Because you, you looked at her and you noticed her amazing personality. You saw her before you had met her, before you'd even spoken to her. When you saw what she looked like, you were like, man, I don't even care if she would never have sex with me. Why? Is she incredibly ugly? Because maybe that would be your first thought. If you saw a really ugly chick and you go, Man, I don't even care if she's asexual. Because I wouldn't fuck her. What, what are you doing? One of the first thoughts I thought was, I don't even care if she's asexual. And I still have that mindset. We have an unbelievable amount in common. And I feel, and I like her for who she is. You know? I like her for her. Well, that's great, man. But you're not asexual. That's like, what you're signing up for is like a fucking marriage where the, where the man's gay and the woman doesn't know. And they have a great time, but at the end of the day, he doesn't want to fuck her. And she does. And that makes her feel like shit and insecure. However, even with all of that said, I realize that going into a relationship with like, like that would not be easy for someone who's sexually active. That's pretty much it. What do you make of this? Thanks. Have an astonishingly shit one. Dude, don't do this. Don't do this to yourself and don't do it to the poor girl. If the poor girl actually is asexual, if that even exists, sure. She doesn't want to fuck anyone ever. But she would like to have a romantic relationship with you. No. Dude, she can find someone who also doesn't want to fuck and they can go and have the best dates ever. Dude, imagine two asexual people in a relationship. That'd be the most boring relationship on earth. How do they switch it up? That's the only way people keep like long-term relationships interesting is they start doing horrible shit to each other in the bedroom. What do asexual people who have been together for five years do. What do they do? What do they do? Do they see a movie and then halfway through the movie the girl punches the guy in the mouth? <laughs> like, what do they do? What do they do, man? Two asexual people. I mean, isn't that just a friendship? I love my friends. I guess me and Luke are in an asexual relationship. What do they do, man? Dude, if, there t if there's an asexual person listening to this and they have an asexual partner or they ever have, what did you do? What did you do? That's all I want to know. Because, man, what do you do? You go on your dates and then you get some food and then you watch Netflix and then you sit at home and you what? You, s you look at each other? No one's personality is so good that they can get away with five years of never sucking a dick. No one's personality is that good. And you know that, man. And I'm not... I'm, I'm approaching this from a male perspective. And this might sound like entitled and misogynistic or whatever. 
But let me switch the script. No one's personality is so good that you can last five years without sucking on a clip. I'm sorry, dude. Asexual dude with, with sexually active female partner. You're going to have to fuck her at some point or walk away. <laughs> you know what it's like? You know what it's like? If, if it's, it's like fucking... And especially if, if, if an asexual person with, with a person who wants to have sex... What's that like? That's like if you went to the... <laughs> it's like I've been going to the gym a lot. So I'm going to use a gym analogy, right? If I went to the gym... And I was like, oh, I don't do squats. I don't do squats. But then I went up to like the squat rack and I just reserved it. I put my I put my Death Threats Don't Scare Me hoodie available at losepairs.com slash watch. I put my hoodie over the bar, which is the internationally recognized sign of I'm going to use this. I'm This is in use. I'm just setting up the weights and getting some water, but I am using this. That's like me. Going to the fucking gym, but be, but I don't do squats, alright? I'm a squats. And I put my hoodie over the bar, and then anyone, anyone who wants to come in and use the squat rack for some actual squats, I go, no, 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 I'm using that. Sorry. That's like your girlfriend. She's putting, she's putting her hoodie over your dick. And then any chick who wants to use that, she walks up and goes, "No, no, no, I'm using that." And then every girl goes, "Oh, yeah, but you're not, you're not, you're asexual. You're not, you're not, you're not sitting on that or doing anything with that." Can I, can I give that a spin? She goes, "No, no, no, I'm. That's in use at the moment." And then you're, you're, you're sitting there being like, "Dude, I'm gonna dick. I gotta use it. Are you gonna use it? Or are you just gonna put a hoodie on it?" And she's like, "I'm just putting, I'm just putting my death threats don't scare me hoodie available at losepairs.com slash watch." Over your dick, and no one else can use. She's, dude, uh, <clears throat> you don't want to do that to yourself, all right? That was a fucking horrendous analogy, but you, do you see where I'm coming from, man? Like, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's exactly like a gay dude and a straight woman having a relationship together. It's not going to work because sexually, those two people want the opposite of each other. They want different things. You're, you're, you can't tell me that six months into your relationship, if you're lying in bed and you haven't nut in a real woman for six months, imagine no nut for six months, but you're around that. You're around it all the time. You'll see her naked, man. You're around that all the time. And you're not, you not once would you look at her and be like, and you wouldn't hate her a little bit. Not once. For putting you in a position, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you're entitled to that at all, because at the end of the day, it'd be your fucking decision to go into a scenario where you could never have that, and if she never wants to have that, you should never, ever make her do that, because she doesn't want to do that, but you're going to end up either hating yourself or hating her unjustifiably. Because you've put yourself in a situation where you just can't do the thing that you really want to fucking do with your partner. And you will think, oh, I could be with literally any other woman in the world and that this would happen. But it's not going to happen with her. What am I doing? So all I'm saying, man, if you sign up to this fucking thing, you, you're going to have some really good dates, man. <laughs> you're going to have so, You're going to have so many dates. You're going to have so many fucking dates. What do you want to do today, honey? I want to bend you over the kitchen bench. How about a movie? Alrighty, let's go see Batman v Superman. How about today? What would you like to do today? I want to finger you in the back seat of the car. How about a picnic? Alright, let's go and sit in the grass and have croissants. Like, that's all you're going to be thinking, man. Imagine yourself six months into a relationship where you're just not ever allowed to have sex ever. And you can't have it with other people because you've decided to be in a committed relationship with an asexual person. You're going to end up being a shithouse boyfriend because she's going to want to go on so many dates. She's going to be like, oh, bro, she's going to perfect the date game and you're going to hate all of them because you're trying to perfect the nut game. All right? Don't put yourself in that situation. Go find, go find literally any other girl in the world who will want to have sex with you. 
or not even with you, who, 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 even if they don't want to fuck you, at least they would, they might have sex with you and then be like, ah, oh, I'm better than this. You know, I, that's better than, than going on 7,000 fucking picnics with an asexual person and you want to have, like, dude, don't do that to yourself. Or her. You'll end up being an awful boyfriend. She can do better. Because you know she doesn't want to put up with some dude fucking rubbing her leg at 3am in the morning. Just trying to change her sexuality that will not move. Could you imagine that shit? Like, dude, this, this is what you would be doing to yourself, right? Imagine if you got into a relationship with a man, and you're not gay, and then at, at fucking 3am, after you've gone on the best picnic of all time, he just starts rubbing your leg, hoping that maybe if he rubs it in this way, as opposed to the last way he rubbed it after, the, after you saw Batman v Superman for the 7,000th time, that that might turn you gay. It's not going to turn you gay, in the same way that you're not going to turn her asexual. So either, you're going to end up having resentful pity sex that will be awful because she won't enjoy it and, and you will know that she's doing it to shut you up or you just never have sex ever and you might as well cut your dick off man don't do that to yourself don't do that to her she can find an asexual partner who's, who, who fucking froths a good date you know you can do an escape room or or fucking hold hands down a water slide. I don't know. I don't know. What do you do? I don't know. What do you do? Imagine after like... Imagine being in a 15 year long asexual relationship. What do you hold hands? I don't, I don't know. What do you do? Anyway, you, you don't want to do this yourself, man. Find any other girl in the world. And if you can't, I want you to sit down and seriously imagine... Three years into a relationship where you have never fucked her. Never once had sex. You do. I'm not even talking about like really good, like sexy, horny sex. I'm talking about you'll never make love to, uh, to her, ever. You'll never have that moment where you're super close. And you're like, I love her. Because she'll be like, when the fuck is this going to be over? <laughs> Don't do it to yourself, man. <clears throat> Find any other girl and, and and let her play Where's Wally trying to find an asexual man. Might as well be trying to find a fucking diamond in the toilet. Alright, that's the end of the episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, thank, you for, thank you so much for all of the um, positive feedback on the comedy special trailer and uh, for you guys sharing it and, and, and tagging your friends and all that kind of stuff. I, hon I honestly, if I could ask any anything from you guys, it would be... Show the trailer to a friend. Um, because I feel like this is the first thing that I've made that anyone could enjoy. If they like stand-up comedy, anyone can enjoy it. So send it to a friend who likes stand-up comedy, even if they're not a fan of me. Um, if you could do that, or tag a friend who does like me, or whatever, share it with someone. That's all I ask. Thank you very much. Um, and if you want to pre-order it, it's at lewspears.com slash watch. Um, Lose pairs. Fuck you. I've been talking about that for 20 minutes. Hey, Jazz, this guy, his ex-girlfriend has come back into his life, but she's told him that, he's ace, that she's asexual. She'll never fuck him, and he's considering going for it. He's not asexual. Well, if he's not asexual, and he wants that in a relationship, what is he doing? I know. I was just talking about it. What do you reckon? <laughs> what do you reckon... Two asexual people in a relationship do. Eat food. And then? Watch TV. And then? Sleep. And then five years down the line, they're still together. And they get a mortgage. That's, that's all they... Yeah, what do they do? But they never fuck. How do they get their tension out? They're asexual. They don't have tension. They're basically human tea towels. <laughs> you, don't wanna, you don't wanna be with a human tea towel, man. Don't do it to yourself. All right, that's the end of the episode. Um, also, there's there's 10 tickets left to Melbourne. Um, fuck all tickets left to Brisbane and Sydney. I'll see you guys next week. I'm going to be there. Melbourne on Tuesday. Sydney on Wednesday. 
uh, Brisbane on Thursday. If you want to get tickets to that, it's loosebeers.com slash gigs. If you want to pre-order the special because you're outside of those areas, loosebeers.com slash watch. If you want some pairs, you can go fuck yourself. All right, see you later. Uh, have a shit one. I'll talk to you next week.